What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today, I'm going to be showing off a crazy dark box deck that uses Silvalli GX as well as Weavile GX to move darkness energy wherever you want on your board and take big KOs. Let's take a look. Now, I got this list from a player named Steven, aka The Mailman on PTCGO, who won a tournament hosted by Azul. So major props to Steven for a very cool list. This dark box list uses Silvalli GX with the disc reload ability to fill your hand to five cards once during your turn. Silvalli GX's ability is really powerful and you actually end up using Brave Buddies way more than you would think for just two energy. And if you played a supporter card from your hand during this turn, you do 50 damage plus 70 more. So 120 damage actually caves a ton of non GX threats. You can knock out Blacephalons, drop and the like with Brave Buddies for just two energy, which is very good. So Silvalli GX has not really seen a lot of play up until this point and fits perfectly in this Dark Box deck. We also run Weavile GX with a Shadow Connection ability, which allows you to move your Darkness Energy anywhere you want on your board, which is extremely powerful in this archetype since you can swing all of your energy from a 270 hit point Umbreon and Dark Ride GX, which can use Black Land, which does 150, 60 snipe to one of your opponent's Pokemon GX or EX. Move that energy on to Alolan Persian GX, which has got an incredible ability, Smug Face, which prevents all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's tag team Pokemon and Ultra Beast and by your opponent's Pokemon that have any special energy attached to them. You can swing your energy onto Megalopunny and Jigglypuff GX, which is very good against Mewtwo Dex and Picarom. Or you can move all your energy onto Mega Sableye and Tyranitar with a greedy crush attack and easily take bonus prizes against Pokemon GX. It's very easy to take three prizes on a Disney GX for game. And uh, very situational, you can pull off a Gigafall GX, which does 250 damage. If you have five extra energy attached, that would be all 10 energy in the deck. You get to mill, what, 15 cards from your opponent's deck, which uh, almost always wins you the game at the end of the game. If you were able to pull that off, it's very difficult to do though, and I don't think I've actually ever seen it done. That being said, this deck is pretty awesome. I really like all of the options that it has available to it. Uh, Hoopa GX is an absolute all-star as well with the Rogue Ring attack, helping to set your deck up. Dark Strike is very good, can one-hit KO Dragapult V Maxes, and Devilish Hands GX can easily finish off to Denny GXs and things like that on your opponent's bench to snipe for game. The added uh, you know, Alolan Persian GX just gives you a really nice wall against, uh, you know, Ultra Beast decks as well as decks that center primarily around tag team Pokemon as well. And Stocking Claws GX can be situationally useful, dealing 120 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Now, the only way to charge energy in this deck is by using Dark Ride Prism Star's Nightmare Star, which allows you to throw two darkness energy from your hand onto the Dark Ride Prism Star when you put it from your hand to your bench or by using red and blue. And red and blue is the most reliable energy acceleration source that we have in this deck. So the main idea is gonna to be to set up either Sneasel or uh, type null on the first turn of the game and then, and then use your tag calls to find a red and blue. And then you can use red and blue, discard two other cards from your hand in order to search your deck for an evolved Pokemon and put up to two basic energy from your deck onto that Pokemon. So what will usually happen is you get an energy drop turn one, then you can red and blue into either Silvalli GX or Weavile and accelerate a bunch of energy up onto that Pokemon that you evolved and then use Weavile GX's shadow connection to move that energy wherever you want this deck is awesome because it's just got a lot of options and is really fun to play check out the gameplay and let me know what do you think of steven's dark box deck in the comments below we're going first this game and i'm not exactly sure what i'm playing against they open a jirachi but that is not very telling what i do know is that i probably need to discard all the cards in this hand with the denny gx in order to draw out of this so we are going to go for that to Denny turn one, I'm also going to be able to use the Dark Ride Prism Star to put an extra bonus energy into play. We're going to get rid of the Alolan Persian, go for a Sneasel. There's only one in the deck, one Weavile. That's fine. Two Silvalli GX. And we do have the Air Balloon for the active type null and Day Day Change. We'll see six brand new cards. We did find a very solid hand here. We've got a second energy we could just put onto maybe the Sneasel. And we've got another air balloon. We're just going to pass and kind of see what my opponent does from here. We do have 
Marnie in our hand for next turn as well. And hopefully we draw into some of our evolutions because of the Dark Rye Prism Star. Fortunately, did not have to actually hit a red and blue in order to get off a meaningful attack this next turn. I can manually attach and we have three energy. Three is very much the magic number for this deck because it unlocks our Umbreon and Dark Rise attack. It unlocks Weavile's attack. Two energy will get us an attack with uh, the Sovala GX, which you actually attack with way more than you would think. Uh, it looks like we are playing against Dragapult VMAX, so very much looking forward to this match. Should be pretty solid for us, considering that Dragapult VMAX is weak to dark, so we do love to see that. Uh, Umbreon and Darkrai is one of our biggest attackers in this matchup for just three energy and our Vitality Band. We could take a one-hit KO on Dragapult VMAX. So the real uh, the real kind of unfortunate thing would be as if would be if they play uh, Shadow Box Mimikyu. Shadow Box Mimikyu can be very troubling for us because it could completely shut down the Weavile GX. So we are gonna try and move all this energy over to a substantial attacker right now because that uh, that would just be very important. So I think here, Cynthia and Caitlyn, we could play that. I also could Quick Ball and then Pokemon Communicate the Quick Ball and go from there. Uh, I think we're just going to Cynthia and Caitlyn first. Get the boss's orders out of the deck. Or get boss's orders out of my hand. Seems fine. They're going to come up with the Dragapult here eventually. Yes, we're going to get that out of here. Draw three cards. And we're hoping to just find a Pokemon. Yep, so now I can Pokemon Communicate. It's very good. We can Communicate this guy. And then I think first we're setting up, I kind of have to set up the Weavile first, unfortunately. That's fine though, because I could still attack. So we are going to set up the Weavile, we have to, because we don't, they could snipe our Sneasel and KO it, which could mean that I never get to attack. So we're going to do that, and then I've got the Quick Ball, we can just play the Quick Ball and get ourselves into a reasonable attacker. Hoopa GX is also really good. Resist Psychic, and we could just Rogue Ring, go get ourselves some really solid cards. That could be good. Also, the Umbreon and Darkrai, just uh, another phenomenal card for us. I think the Hoopa GX is probably the most threatening card I can get. So we're going to look at that, and I'm going to evolve this. We're going to move, put one energy here, Shadow Connection, to move our energy, actually I like keeping the one there. We're gonna move the one off of this Dark Rye Prism Star, probably also onto the Hoopa. Now the Hoopa is GX, so we are gonna to have to Rogue Ring and get ourselves, you know, probably the Caddox Swell as well as Acel Valley, and then you know we're kind of ready to just start KOing things. Um, they're gonna deal 110, 110 plus 20 from Shrine. I actually think it's safe to just put all of my energy onto the Hoopa GX. That's fine. Just in case they play power plants. I don't think that they do, but, you know, just in case. And then we're going to Rogue Ring. It's not even worth it to Dark Strike. Here, we're just trying to set up. So I want the Soul Valley. Uh, or I could go Red and Blue. No, we don't really have, We could go Tag Call, and then I could Tag Call into a Red and Blue. We'd get even more energy into play. I like that. Yeah, we'd Tag Call in Chaotic Swell. That way, I can Tag Call for the Red and Blue, and we'll just go from there. And that way, also... If my opponent decides to, uh, you know, if my opponent decides to Marnie me or something like that, then it's just a tag call is being thrown to the bottom of the deck. That's okay. So I think this is probably a very strong board state for us. Hoopa conveniently deals 160 damage. I didn't want to Dark Strike. I mean, using your Dark Strike here is just really bad. Into the Jirachi, we're taking one prize. Then my opponent could Marnie us, and we just get ourselves into a weird hand where I'm not able to Dark Strike again next turn, and we could, get, we could kind of completely have the rug swept out from underneath us. So we really want to just Rogue Ring and set up, and Rogue Ring is very good for this deck because there are just a lot of moving pieces, in Dark Box. I mean, this is not a simple deck. We've got, uh, you know, like what, like five or six individual attackers that all do different things. We've got two different stage ones in the deck, which both do different things, but are both also very essential to the deck as well. Now, it looks like my opponent is going to try and dive in with the Zigzagoons and just deal as much damage as they possibly can to the Hoopa GX, which makes a lot of sense. That's why I'm going for the Tag Call Red and Blue. We're going to try and get this Sylvalli up and going. 
and with the chaotic swell we also um you know we also just prevent that shrine damage from coming in my opponent has already discarded another shrine which is very good for us and i'm wondering if they're even going to come up with the dragapult v max this turn i mean they have to know bring the dragapult v max into the active i mean they have to deal damage right they have to put some pressure on this hoopa gx they can't just let it sit here eventually they'll get bosses ordered into the active so they have to try and aggress on the hoopa but they're only dealing 110 damage one uh 120 so one, i'll be at 140 after the shrine tick and then i'll potentially go up to 160 after i hit into this so i will only have 30 hp left uh but they don't have a backup dragapult they're not playing the malamar at least from what i can see the acro bikes uh making me think that this is probably a list that is similar to towards though i don't think that toward ah well i take it all back toward definitely did not play crushing hammers and toward also uh, did not play the Mew from Unbroken Bonds in his list, but uh, the Crushing Hammer there could be useful. Uh, however, I did get the red and blue, so we're going to be able to accelerate that energy. And so long as we don't see a Shadow Box Mimikyu, then we're in the clear. Shadow Box Mimikyu does do a lot of work to this deck, though, so that would be very scary for us to play against. But all things should be go here. Uh, we've got the Caddox Well, we've got the Tag Call, and we're going to set up the Silvalli GX and start churning through our deck, which is just a really... Uh, really fun thing to do. I mean, setting up the Silver Valley GX, uh, it's such a powerful ability. It's just a card that has not seen a ton of play. In uh, uh, We're not, definitely not going to need that. So we're going to go to the red and blue, and we're going to discard the Megalopony. Uh, we can get rid of the Quick Ball as well. I like that. So we're just going to red and blue, and yup, we're going to get rid of these guys. Megalopony is almost entirely useless against this deck, so we'll involve evolve into Silla Valley GX there, get our energy. And now we've got the machine ready to roll. Here we go, disc reload. And we could just draw some more cards. We've got the three energy we need on the Hoopa GX. Uh, I'm not sure that there is a safer place for the two energy right now. I guess we could move these two energy over to my Weavile GX. It's fine, Weavile GX does resist. Um, does resist psychic so it's a little bit harder for my opponent to ko and we'll use dark strike so big one hit ko here from the hoopa gx it will be near ko range i mean it'll be in ko range for sure if my opponent evolves into their uh you know their drag pult v max and uses shred they could take the knockout on my hoopa but i've actually got game in hand so long as i can find one more energy we've got game in hand all i have to do is ordinary rod the hoopa back into the deck and then pokemon communicate for the hoopa back put it down find one more energy if i can and then uh you know, we've got we've got a a one hit ko on a potential another dragapult v max but we'll see my opponent may be able to just ko the hoopa with the zigzagoons alone which would be very strong i mean that certainly is putting a lot of pressure onto me. They do have reset stamp, which is why the Silvalli GX is so good. It's also uh, part of the reason why the, again, Shadow Box Mimikyu would be so, so very bad. Because imagine if, imagine if my opponent played the Silvalli or the, uh, the Shadow Box Mimikyu, what would I even do right now? I would be completely toast if they just dropped that thing out of nowhere i couldn't move the energy off my weavile gx i couldn't draw cards with silvalli gx we would just be in a horrible situation we are going to promote the silvalli gx here and just say like okay i've got an air balloon on the silvalli and uh, i can draw some cards i also have the pokemon communication i could potentially go get myself uh maybe umbreon dark rye or something like that that's bad actually the crushing hammers are going to be a real pain for us to trudge through here because uh, we're just going to be forced into pulling off another red and blue. And they've only played two Crushing Hammers so far. And the Crushing Hammers are going to prevent me from launching a meaningful attack this turn. I mean, I could always Brave Buddies, but especially if we take a shred to, uh, you know, if we take a shred to the face here with Silvalli, we're not going to want to Brave Buddies and risk losing those two energies. So at this point... We are just trying to attack one more Dragapult VMAX. So we're going to try and get our energies to stick. I probably will have to try and red and blue one more time. I have five energies in the discard pile right now, which is very tough. And uh, well, Umbreon and Darkrai with the uh, with the Vitality Ban or the uh, 
yeah, the Vitality Band would be very good for us to potentially finish this game off. Those Galarian Zigzagoons are putting in a ton of work here, getting my opponent that knockout on the Hoopa is very good. I am curious if they'll even come up with the Dragapult this turn or if they're just going to kind of leave that safely over there. Uh, looks like they're going to leave it safely on the bench, and I think that that is pretty reasonable. This turn, I just want to establish another Sneasel. Let's see, do I have? I don't have Weavile on the deck, meaning that we cannot red and blue. So I'm going to establish another Type Null because we can red and blue the Type Null, which could be very good. And Malolana also strong. I think I'm going to double, you know, the Pokemon communication there just to thin the hand. We're going to grab the Type Null again, and then we're going to Disc Reload first. See if there's a better option than Marnie, but it, oh, Mallow and Lana could be strong for us. We could tag call, grab Mallow and Lana, completely heal ourselves. I do like that. And we can grab, let's see, probably grab the red and blue too. That way I'm guaranteed more energy next turn. Mallow and Lana would completely heal my dude. Like that. Seems like a strong play for us. We're just going to Mallow and Lana. I'm going to... Hmm. It's not a good attack to use, though. I could Mallow and Lana into... Yeah, Type Null. That doesn't do anything. We don't have a free Retreater in play. Do we just move our energy to the active Sil Valley GX? They can't actually KO the Sil Valley GX. They cannot. So that's very good for us. Be close to being KO'd, but let's see. How many scoop-ups do they have? Three scoop-ups? Yes. They cannot KO this Ovalley GX, so I think it's safe to do. We just Shadow Connection. Move an energy to the active. I have not played a supporter this turn, though. So I would have to, like, retreat into... Um, yeah, I'll click down there. I'd have to retreat into like Weavile GX and Mallow and Lana. That I mean, I do want to keep the red and blue, so I think that that's probably fine. We just don't have a free retreater, so it's not worth doing. We're gonna retreat here, Mallow and Lana the hand. That fully heals the Weavile, which is nice. It is. My opponent does only have four prizes left to take though, so they're looking to just knock out Silvalli GX and the Dedenne GX for game. And we're just going to Brave Buddies. Take that knockout on the Jirachi. Hopefully that limits my opponent's options too. And we're going to go down to two prize cards remaining. And the reason we're being so serious about holding on to this red and blue in this hand is because of the fact that my opponent still has two Crushing Hammers at large. So even if they completely remove my entire board of energy this turn, I still have an out to win the game if I can get the Umbreon and Darkrai with the Vitality Band, if I red and blue. So it's a lot. They don't have it this turn, though. It's really big. Uh, they are going to put my Silvalli GX kind of in danger. But at this point, I can potentially win the game with my, uh, with my Mega Sableye and Tyranitar. Because I can get five energy into play. Uh, I'm just going to red and blue. We're going to get rid of the Marnie and the Cynthia and Caitlyn. So we're going to get ourselves Silvalli GX, and now I've got two disc reloads to draw. And we'll have five energy as well. we got just enough energy in the deck. Two darkness energies left. That's really big. So we have plenty of draw power now. We're going to put all of our energy into play and disc reload twice to see if we can find a game-winning attacker. Sure enough, we draw into... I got it both ways. We draw into the Umbreon and Darkrai with the Vitality Band, so we could just use Shadow Connection, and we're going to move all of those energies over to Umbreon and Darkrai GX, and we get to Black Lance for a perfect 160 damage, taking the one-hit KO on Dragapult VMAX, 320 damage with Black Lance for game, and that's it. Dark Box easily disposing of Dragapult. Not easily, that was actually pretty close, but Dark Box taking care of Dragapult VMAX. That was a great game. GG's to my opponent for sure. And uh, like I said, yeah, Shadow Box Mimikyu would completely shut our deck down, but a lot of decks are not playing the Shadow Box Mimikyu right now. So uh, Dragapult, I have to say, 
uh, is a very powerful deck, very stressful to play against. Even if you've got weakness on your side, it can be very difficult to beat Dragapult VMAX. But Dark Box is looking better than ever right now. And I have to say, this list is a very solid one. So definitely recommend checking it out. Looks like I'm going to be going first this game. We're playing against a control deck, which certainly could be very tough for us to beat. We do have Gigafall GX. I do not think it is ever going to be possible to get 10 energy onto our um, into our Mega Sableye and Tyranitar. 789, as considering I only have 9 in the deck. So yes, that is not going to be an option for us, I do not think. And the rest of our deck is not super great about... Uh, not super great about this. So I think we're just going to have to try and run them off the table. We will grab probably a Cynthia Caitlin and an Umbreon Darkrai. That's fine. I can attach an energy to the Umbreon Darkrai. Um, I do also just have the Silvalley in my hand, which is kind of nice. I think I'm just going to... We'll probably start off with an energy on the Type Null and we can evolve and maybe Brave Buddies next turn, knock out the Oranguru. We just are going to have to try and run them off the table. We don't have any way to recharge energy or do anything like that. So I am almost positive that we're going to be seeing Crushing Hammer coming down turn one. I feel like they always got it. They also have Articuno GX in the deck, as we can tell from the water energy here. So they could always Cold Crush GX to completely remove all of the energy from my uh from my active fortunately my opponent apparently has nothing so we are very pleased here now this is a hand control deck so this is a hand control mill deck i saw chip chip ice axes things like that in the mulligan hand so i know that that is what they are rocking with and i do have to cynthia and caitlin in order to uh in order to draw more cards here or in order to do more damage with my brave buddies so we are definitely going to do that and i'm gonna just rock with this we're gonna put the air balloons down Give myself that uh, that free retreat. I'm going to hold this one in my hand. We're just going to take a knockout with the Brave Buddies on that Oranguru and kind of just hold this hand. Marnie is very strong against control decks. So that is something that we can kind of use to our advantage as well. If my opponent is having a slow time setting up, we can kind of just dive in and hopefully just capitalize on a very slow start for my opponent. They've got Power Plant, Ditto Prism Star, Chip Chip Ice Axe. This does not seem good. They did play a Surge. They might have like Research or something like that to dig into the deck and draw more cards. But the Water Energy onto the Ditto, they do have Research. So they're going to draw seven more cards here. And they do have one more Supporter that they can play since they do have, uh, they have played that Surge this turn. And they have Mars in their hand. So they're discarding the Mars. That means that they definitely have another supporter that they are looking to play. But their setup has been very precarious in this opening turn. So uh, these opening couple of turns. So I'm pretty confident, especially with like boss's orders in my hand, things like that. So we're going to be able to capitalize on this uh, slow setup pace from my opponent. Now they may opt to retreat into Zashi and V and Intrepid Sword. They may end up doing that. They're just going to Tate and Liza first see five new cards and they're definitely looking to intrepid sword this turn so i probably will marnie them limit them to just a four card hand and go from there that does get me out of these very good cards in my hand right now though and it looks like maybe they're trying to get us in chino out into play yes they are so i could potentially go for a boss's orders this next turn and just bring that Sinchino up and kind of finish it off by having the boss's orders in the deck is just a, a very good thing for us to have and we see they just play a ton of draw options i mean look at this there's acro bikes research burning through the deck and you know once this deck gets set up it's gonna be very challenging for me to beat especially with the power plants in play uh, i would love to find my chaotic swells put the chaotic swell down so that i can continue to use disc reload to get myself resources that I may need to kind of close this game out. I think that the uh, Umbreon and Darkrai, you know, could be okay. I think uh, 150 damage, just solid. It's only got a retreat of two. Having that GX attack available, Dark Moon GX, I mean, I could see myself using that to try and buy myself a turn somewhere down the line. Now, my opponent is going to Ordinary Rod, and it looks like they're just going to Intrepid Sword. They're only going to have six cards in hand. I think I would rather just boss his orders this turn while I have it and just utilize that. Uh, it is a little bit sketchy because I don't have a Sneasel in place, so we're not going to have any sort of way to accelerate energy. I could put the Alola Meowth down. That way I'm always live for a red and blue play or something like that. 
Uh, I think that that could be pretty decent. At this point, though, we could just kind of charge forward with Sil Valley GX, just put another energy onto it. I don't actually mind that. I think that's... Uh, okay, so then the Articuno GX kind of becomes the primary concern. So I think maybe another energy onto the Umbreon Darkrai. Seems reasonable. And then just bosses orders the Sinchino. Seems good. We're definitely trying to just run them off the table. So we're going to break buddies again. Take that knockout on Sinchino. Limit their draw power. That's the biggest thing in playing against this deck. Try to limit the draw power. Mallow and Lana is not going to re be really doing that much. It does get me out of the active position with a tag call. It's one of the reasons we haven't played the second tag call yet. We don't really want to uh, get you know these options out of our deck. We want to keep as many cards in the deck as possible. Make it as hard as possible for my opponent to mill me out of the game you know if i get stamped to a low hand size tag call could be good to mallow and lana get me out of the active also to grab cynthia and caitlin cynthia and caitlin's very valuable in this deck as well since it's going to allow me to get boss's orders back and i can kind of just tempo back and forth between the mallow and lana you know and the uh or between the cynthia and caitlin and the boss's orders and so on and so forth now it looks like they're going to be promoting gumi this turn i also am not quite sure what Del Caddy does. So that's very interesting here. Gumi makes it so that uh, my attacks are going to cost one more. And they are going to go in with a stamp. That's fine. I don't think they're going to be getting... Uh, oh, Surge and Research. They're getting a huge draw here. That's just a ton of cards. So Surge, Research, and they get one more Supporter, and they stamp me to four cards, and they have Power Plant in play. And these four cards are not exactly great. So we're hoping that we can find something good off of the top deck. Uh, even like a stadium, anything really would be very strong for us. Uh, we don't really have any targets for quick ball here. It would be a shame if just the stamp to four, random stamp to four kind of got us out of the cards we need in order to be successful this game. Here is the Delcaddy, finally. Search friends when you play this Pokemon from your hand, evolve one of your Pokemon, you may put two supporter cards from your discard pile back into your hand, so that's very valuable. They're looking like they're trying to get some hand removal stuff, and they're just going to Mars. It's fine. You know, that whole hand kind of stinks, so that's fair. We're just looking for something good off the top. If they chip chip in here, and I happen to have three dead guards in my hand, that's pretty wild. But I do have... Let's see, Silver Knight Geo? Yeah, that's not going to do anything. And they play Scoop Up Net, so they can reuse the Delcat. It's really creative. Um, they can bring supporters back turn after turn. And they don't need to rely on Lusamine in order to do that. Sure enough, we find the Marnie. What a sack. He's got it. So we're going to go grab uh, I believe Sneasel seems correct. And then that way I can move energy around. So we're going to do that. Marnie. Marnie's the perfect supporter to top deck there. And we do have Tag Call so I can red and blue next turn, which is really good. We like that. And I've got the energy for my Silvalli GX. So we are just going to Brave Buddies here, take the knockout on the Gumi. Unfortunately, we do have to commit another Darkness Energy to that uh, Silvalli GX, but it's okay. I mean, they could Articuno GX here. That's kind of like the scariest thing, right? If they go into Articuno GX, now they do have Power Plant in play, so they would have to bump their own Power Plants in order to... Um, in order to use the Articuno GX's ability to kind of bring that water energy off of the Sinchino. And sure enough, that Delcaddy is proving to be really useful. They got Delcaddy to get Surge and Research back from the discard pile, and they're just going to Research again, Belelba in their hand too. We already know that that's going to be a huge threat. And fortunately for me, I don't think I'd have any chance in this game if they had gone three for three on those hammers or two for two on those hammers so far. Uh, or yeah, it was three. Yeah, 0 for 3 on those hammers. So that's like really essential. Uh, and they are continuously just hitting that scoop up net on the Delcaddy as well. So they're doing a real good job of recycling those supporters. They finally hit a crushing hammer, which is tough. And I imagine this is going to be a turn where they go in with the Orangaroo to resource management. Uh, I think that they are... Moving the energy off of the Umbreon and Darkrai, that's fine. I do need to find myself a stadium so that I can get this power plant out of play. I think we're going to be in a fine spot if we can do that. But Ranguru just going to be probably getting back, uh, you know, scoop up nets, things like that, so they can continue using that Delcaddy over and over again. 
which is super cool. I've never seen a control deck that used the scoop of nets with the Del Caddy. Uh, it's a pretty neat little function there. I do think that that's very creative, and it is certainly proving to be pretty successful here. So I can tag call for a red and blue, which could be good. Get myself the Weavile. But I'm thinking that I probably just want to Cynthia and Caitlyn. I think that would be better. So we're going to grab Cynthia and Caitlyn and red and blue. I think that those are both good. Um, that seems fine. I can get Boss Soders back from the discard pile. I know they got Reset Stamp. Let's see. I got two Swells in the deck. I mean, if there was a Guzman Hall in here, that'd be what I was grabbing. But we do not have Guzman Hall in the deck, so I just have to hope that off these three cards, I am able to find one of my two... Um, one of my two Caddox Wells. That'd be great. Grab the boss's orders. Seems good. Let's not find one of our two Caddox Wells. Bad. Uh, I could go into Hoopa GX and Rogue Ring. I do know that I'm already going to be stamped. I already know that. So we're kind of trying to figure out, okay, what's the best course of action, assuming a reset stamp uh, to... Th two potentially uh that's why if i switch into hoopa gx and i use rogue ring it's nice because i can kind of set up my wing condition a little bit easier also stamp will only stamp to three and not stamp to two stamp to two is pretty harsh so there's that to think about i think i am going to go here into the hoopa and try to just build myself uh, a more stable board position all i really want is weavile and swell i think that those cards will be very good for us so uh yeah we can grab weavile and swell out of the deck and then swell will help me buy some time and i can boss his orders too so that's really good the catech swell kicking that power plant out of there i don't suspect that i'm going to be able to hold on to this hand but we also knew that cold crush was coming right uh my opponent uh, has got the articuno gx in their hand i know that that's an option you know i kind of want to try and keep these energy on the sill valley as safe as possible so we got them on the bench right now that's really going to be how i construct my win condition and there's no gx's or anything like that but if i do have five energy we have to keep in mind, if I'm at any point able to get five energy into play, then I can um, I can use, you know, and if they cold crush. I doubt I'm going to be able to get five energy into play on the turn that they cold crush. It's probably not happening. But it's something to think about. Now, they're going to chip chip here. Uh, chip chip is pretty much meaningless. I just rogue ringed and just got whatever two cards I wanted out of my deck into my hand. So that's not going to be super effective. Now, Devilish Hands GX is actually kind of interesting because I can do 180 snipe damage. So that is another option for three energy. I can completely KO an Articuno GX if there happens to be one on my opponent's side of the field. And we're going to grab red and blue there. That's not the worst card, but these two Pokemon communications are not super great. Uh, I'm really just hoping that I get to... Hold on to the red and blue. That'd be nice. I can evolve up this Sneasel into a Weavile. I'm also really hoping that this energy sticks on the Hoopa. This is kind of why I put the Hoopa into the active position. If they flip tails on this Crushing Hammer, assuming that they have the Crushing Hammer in their hand, then I get to Rogue Ring again, which is going to be very valuable. They can continuously you know, reset stamp me, but, uh, uh, but Rogue Ring seems pretty good just to force them to have to reset stamp every single turn while I try to build up my wing condition. So they're going to go, and I get to keep that darkness energy. So I'm imagining they're going to be grabbing probably crushing hammers, things like that, but they have to grab reset stamp every single turn because right now Hoopa is just going to keep using Rogue Ring and keep trying to, uh, you know, keep trying to set up good cards in my hand. I'm just really digging for the swell. That's all I really want, just the Caddox Swell. I would, all game, that thing has been uh avoiding us so if we could just get our hands on swell then we're all good disc reload is going to be our saving grace in this match uh, we don't have a ton of ways to charge energy into play they got a scoop up net there's still no reset stamp so that's fine if we could just find the swell we got Kay cynthia and caitlin we got red and blue got to figure out which one is better for us here i think red and blue guarantee ourselves it's probably good yeah get the two pokemon communication we're finally going to get that weavile and then we're also going to accelerate two energy, which just seems really good. So now, 
at this point, you know, get to a, a point where we just have so much energy in our hand that it uh, seems very strong. I don't think, honestly, grabbing the swell here seems like a little bit of a trap because my opponent's probably going to Mars me. If they Mars away a swell, that's like really bad. Um, I could grab double swell. And then the odds of them removing both are pretty small. I mean, they would have to surge Mars Mars. Ah, we'll shoot our shot. That I mean, that could be a game-losing scenario, though. All right, we'll go for Marnie. And an air balloon. Seems fine. I'm just going to play a little bit more conservatively here. I want to grow my hand size, I guess, before I go for the swell swell. Because if I go for swell swell right then they just surge mars mars maybe they hit both of them and then they chip chip and they start controlling my hand and so on and so forth so uh it's kind of this weird situation where it's like i don't want to grab necessarily the best best cards out of my deck uh and we are going to get reset stamped anyway so it doesn't really matter we did find marnie though so i'm imagining they're probably trying to mars this hand they would love to hit that marnie we're just going to probably you know manually attached they have had a horrible time i will say with these crushing hammers they've not been very reliable for them at this point uh they have all four hammers in the discard pile they've only hit you know maybe one of them so we've been able to keep our energy if those uh crushing hammers have gone a different way this matchup would be in an entirely different space that's for sure so they're grabbing hammer stamp that's fine they're going to keep trying to do it uh i have marnie the marnie doesn't do too terribly much I think we just Pokemon communicates the Dark Ride, kind of thin that out of our deck. And honestly, a Lolan Persian stalking claws GX could be good. I mean, that just could be very valuable for us. So uh, I think I'm gonna grab the Meowth. Because Stalking Claws GX could just potentially win us the game. So that's uh that's something we're gonna do there. And I'm gonna put the extra energy on. I'm just gonna Marnie. And we'll see what we get ourselves into. Still no swell. No swell. That's fine. My hand is nice and big. I'm just going to rogue ring. I know that they're already going to stamp, but it's fine. I'm just going to rogue ring here. And we're going to try and keep it. I mean, if we can keep our hand, that'd be great. So our hand's big enough at this point, and I'm confident grabbing the swells. And if they don't, for some reason, stamp, then we're just in a very good spot. But... I think my decision to kind of keep myself at three prizes until I'm able to stabilize seems like a pretty good one, honestly, because I'm getting stamped to three rather than stamped to two. Getting stamped to two would make it very easy for my opponent to remove my hand, and I don't want to give them that until I am able to establish Chaotic Swell. Once I'm able to establish Chaotic Swell, they may have a way to remove I know they have a way to remove it. They have Faba, I mean, but like... That forces them to at least have to play the Faba, and I still get one turn, maybe, of disc reload if I'm able to get stamped into the Swell. Uh, so they probably are just going to Faba my Stadium away because they have the Delcaddy, so they just can do it, right? They can just do it every single turn. Now, they don't have Persian available to them. That's interesting that they play that as well. And I get to keep my hand. So this is very confusing. Okay. I don't mind it, but I think we win. Uh, if I had a switch out, we would, but I think we are very close to winning at this point. So we've got the Caddx Well. If I could gust up the Zacian and GX it with Dark Moon GX, I mean, that seems like kind of a checkmate scenario, I think. So we'll see. to put this down that's fine i'm gonna see bosses orders up the zashian just making sure that there's nothing else i can really do here i guess i can completely remove is there anything else better okay with bosses orders up probably the skitty. Okay, that's that seems better, actually. Because this is like a guaranteed. I'm only drawing two cards. We take out the skitty. That way they can't get their supporters back every turn. That's good. We didn't hit the stuff we wanted to. 
I don't think, let's see, we ordinary route, we put two energy back into the deck. That's probably fine. Two basic energy cards back into the deck. So we'll do that. And then I can move some energy shadow connection back up to the Hoopa GX. Now, we Dark Strike. I mean, Dark Strike, this is a really rough attack to have to use. I mean, Dark Strike cannot be used back-to-back -back turns. I imagine they would probably have to go in with the Articuno GX if they have one in their hands this next turn. But at this point, I have such a nice kind of loaded uh, board position. I think we could just Dark Strike the Skitty. That way they can't get the Faba back. That's going to be the big thing. They can't get the Faba back because the Faba, I think, is in their discard pile, and they probably rely on... Is it in their discard pile? Yes, it's in their discard pile. So they probably rely on using that Delcaddy every turn in order to you know get the cards they need back from their discard pile. Uh, I do have, let's see, one boss's orders in the discard right now, so I've got another boss's orders in the deck. We are going to want to try and bring up that Zashian V for game. Also, like I said, uh, if they go in with... I mean, I have enough energy in play at this point. If they go in with Articuno GX, I can just Devilish Hands GX the Articuno. Uh, I've got the Swell in play. I think I cut off their access to the Faba. So we could just Devilish Hands GX the Articuno, just move all this energy from my bench up to the Hoopa GX and get the win. Even if they hit this Crushing Hammer here, which they didn't, we still have just enough energy in play to be able to pull this off. They're going to remove an energy from Hoopa, but like I said, I think the Swell is going to do its job here. And sure enough, uh, my opponent is just going to have to resource management. And they don't get the Skitty down this turn. So I think that we are in the clear. Still have not used my GX attack. So I'm pretty safe to just Cynthia and Caitlin bring a boss's orders back from my discard pile. Thin this uh, this hand down. I can Soul Valley GX, kind of disc reload. Make sure that I don't put myself in the danger zone. I mean, they could always do the Surge Belba, Belba, right? And kind of mill six cards doing that. So that's something that I want to look out for. And uh, I don't think that they play Mewtwo and Mew in this particular list. And sure enough, yes, they're getting back the FOB of the Power Plant. They know that they have to pull off that combination in order to make this work. They did not get a reset stamp back, though. So I still think I'm probably in a good spot. I'm just going to fail that search. To fail this search as well. And then I'm going to disk reload, draw some more cards, and we don't really get anything good. So I'm comfortable just using Cynthia and Caitlin for a supporter rack for my discard pile. That's okay. And we're going to grab a boss's orders. And I think, you know, they're going to put so much effort. I do have the retreat on the Hoopa if I want it. That's interesting. So I could. Stocking Claws GX, I think that that's probably bad right now. Is there any G? I could, yeah, Knockout, no trainers. That's that's the play. We go here, Umbreon and Darkrai. We've got the Air Balloon. We go GX the Active, Dark Moon GX, and it's game. We've got one, two, three. Yeah, plenty of energy. So we're going there. We can retreat. I have to get rid of one. But I got one, two, three, four, five. We just Shadow Connection, all this energy up to the Active. I knew that the Umbreon and Darkrai... I knew this card would be good. We put it down at the beginning of the match, and I was like, dang, I bet we can win this game with some sick trainer lock. We've got the Dark Moon GX, boss's orders in our hand. My opponent cannot play any trainer cards from their hand. They are not going to be able to remove my hand at all, which they are going to try and do. They're going to try and FABA. They're going to try and get that power plant into play. We're just going to Dark Moon GX, no trainer cards. I've got the boss's orders in my hand for next turn. Bring up a Sinchino, something like that, Black Lance for game so dark box taking uh what i would consider to be a surprise win i was not thinking that we were going to be able to win this match it seems really brutal especially with all of those crushing hammers and things like that but i think the sil valley gx in combination with the chaotic swell just gives this deck a lot of consistency and all the different options that we had i mean the hoopa gx played a key role. Rogue Ring got us the Chaotic Swells that we needed. The Dark Moon GX played a key role. Weavile GX played a key role. And then even if I needed it, Stalking Claws GX could have been pretty good because I could have just sniped Ace and Chino or something like that for game if I had to. So this is going to be GG's to my opponent. We've got Black Lance for game. Dark Box taking the win against Control. What a wild match. GG's to my opponent for sure.
And that's it for the dark box video. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and make sure to check out the Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash tricky gym, where I stream live Pokemon training card game content every single weekday. Also, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com. We are always buying bulk. We're always buying singles. If you got extra hollows, full arts, GXs, things like that lying around the house, and you want to get some extra cash for your cards, make sure to check out Fulgrip Games buy list. You just fill out the buy list, send us the cards, and we'll send you the cash. It's really that easy. Also, make sure to check out fullgripcodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery. Y'all take it easy and have a great day. Peace.